Hey, today I show you how to create this landscape. First we look at how to create these landscapes and then how to texture them. So let's get started. To create many different detailed landscapes, we can go to Edit Preferences and under Add-ons, activate the Landscape Add-on. After you have activated this, we can Shift A and under Mesh, we have this new Landscape tab. If we select this and open up the different settings, we can see we have a ton of options to change the landscape. At the top here, you can also select different presets, such as a canyon or a cliff, or a scene with a lake and many, many other different things. For this tutorial, I use the default to start. If you increase the subdivision settings, you have way more detail in the mountain itself, but don't go too high, your computer can get really slow. I would recommend the highest you go is 500. And as you can see, if you use 500, you have many, many details. The mesh size just means how big the whole landscape is. So if you go 10 by 10, you can create super big landscapes. But for this tutorial, I stay with two by two because this will work fine. Other than that, we have also different noise types you can play around. So just select them and you can get super crazy results with it. On the random seed, you can get different variations with the same settings you have. So just click through it and find the one you like the most. I really like this one, but I want to have the mountains a bit bigger so we can change the noise size. And if you lower the noise size, the mountains get actually bigger. So just play around with that too. Maybe two more important settings are the settings down here, the fall off. If you select none, you can see that the edges won't level to zero. If you select X and Y, you can see the fall off will be around the mountain region. If you accidentally click away and can't find the settings anymore, you can go over here to your different add-ons and select the create add-on and under landscape main and noise and landscape displacement, you can find all the settings we have before. Just make sure if you change something, you also hit refresh so it actually updates the whole mesh. All right, let's get into shading. For that, let's look at the final texture of the mountain. As you can see here, I organized the different parts you have to add to achieve this effect. But don't worry, it looks way more complicated than it actually is. First, you will need to add the snow transition. This will allow us to control how far the snow should go down. With the snow noise, we can control how dense the snow should be, so how big the patches of snow are, and as I said, how dense they are. If we combine these two textures, we will get this snow layer at the top. With this mask, we will mix two textures. One will be a grass texture and the other will be the snow texture. So all the white parts you can see here will be snow texture and all the black part you can see here will be grass texture. So if we look at the final result, you can see we have this. So let's start again from the beginning. First go into the shadings tab and just add a new color right here. For now, we can delete the principal BSDF. To create the gradient, we need a separate XYC converter. This one right here. With this one, we can press Command T. And if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you should be getting these. If you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on, go to Edit, Preferences, and under Add-ons, just type in Node Wrangler and activate it. We don't need the image texture, so delete it and connect the mapping vector with the separate XYZ vector. Now instead of the UV output, we have to connect it with the generated output. And let's input the Z vector into the surface so we can see what's going on. As you can see now, we have generated a gradient on the Z axis. So from the top of the mountain to the bottom, from white to black. To control this value, we just have to add in a color ramp and now we can slide this up and down. Let's also add in a third color and make this one a grayish type. This will help us to make the transition a little bit more smooth. To create an even more interesting transition, let's add in a vector math node, this one right here. Let's put this one in between the separate XYC and the color ramp. And let's also add in a noise texture. Plug the noise texture also into the vector node and change the math vector node from add to multiply. All we have to do now is up the scale, the details and also the roughness. And then we can play around with the color ramp 
to create a cool transition. As you can see now, we have way better results and a more realistic transition. We are already finished with the first part with the snow transition, so you can select everything, press Shift P to put them in a box. Because the top of the mountains are only white right now and have no different variations in it, we need to add in a second noise texture. Lucky for us, we can select everything, duplicate it and bring it down. We just have to make some small adjustments in here. The first thing we have to do is change the connection from generated to normal. To see the changes we make, we can just select the last node right here with Shift, Control and left click. With this shortcut we can look at any node we have in the scene, so if we only want to look at the node textures we can also press Shift, Command and left click and we can only see what this node looks like in the end. So don't worry, we still have the progress from before, but now we only want to look at this node tree down here. So let's shift command and left click on this one to see what's going on. In this node setup down here, we don't need the gray part in the color ramp. So let's select the gray color and delete it with the minus button. Now, if you move around the white and the black slider, we can create different patches of snow and no snow. Again, with the noise texture right here, we can play with the scale and the detail of how the different patches flow into each other or into the black value. Just play around with the different scale and detail value until you have something you find suitable for your own scene. Alright, the only problem we have right now is that this noise texture goes all the way to the bottom. But lucky for us, if you remember, before we have created this texture right here. So this one goes only to a level we want. So now we just have to combine these two. First, let's select the node tree down here, press Shift P to create a box. You can also move this box around if you want to reorganize everything. To mix these two together, let's add in a mix color node. Plug the color ramp from the top into the A and the color ramp from the bottom to B. Let's change it from mix to multiply. And now let's plug this one into the output. And voila, as you can see, the both textures are combined, but not completely. Just up the factor to one, and as you can see, the texture is complete. The cool thing about this texture right here is that you can always play around with the settings. So if you want to have more snow, just play around with the sliders down here. Or if you want the snow to go deeper or lower, just go at the top here and move the sliders around until you find something you're happy with. All right, the only thing left to do is to add some textures. All right, so let's start by adding a principal BSDF. Just for visualization, I changed this color to green, which will be the ground texture. And let's add in a second principal BSDF and leave this one white for the snow texture. To combine two colors, we just have to add in a mix shader node and plug both colors into the shader. Now, if you would plug this mix shader node into the output, it would look something like this. And this is not what we want. We want to use the mask we did before. So all we have to do is go to the multiply node right here, where both color ramps are plugged in. And let's plug the result into the factor right here. And as you can see now, everything works perfectly. All you have to do now is change this principal BSDF to some real textures and you are done. In my case, I use Quixel Bridge for the textures, so I downloaded a grass and a snow texture and saved it on my computer. The cool thing about the node wrangle add-on is you can just select the principal BSDF, press Shift, Command and T, and now navigate to the textures you have. So let's go to the ground texture, let's select the albedo, normal roughness and whatever textures you want to use and select import. The Node Wrangler add-on will connect everything perfectly. As you can see now, the textures aren't displayed correctly. All we have to do to change this is to select the mountain, press Tab to go into Edit Mode, press U to open the UV Mapping options and select Smart UV Project. Hit OK and wait a few seconds. After it's done, press Tab to go back into Object Mode and the texture should look fine. In my case, the textures are way too big, but lucky the Node Wrangler add-on also imports this mapping node. So we can just go to scale, select all of them and up this to, let's say, 15. And this looks good. 
Let's do the exact same thing for the second texture. So let's select this one, press Shift Command T to open it. Let's locate the texture. Let's select the albedo, normal and roughness map. Hit import and everything should be set up correctly. Also change the scale on this one. Let's put this one to 15 or something. And congratulations, you have created your own mountain textures with some snow layer on top. All you have to do now is to add some nice lighting or HDRI and create your very own world. I hope everything works for you. If you have some questions, just write them in the comments and I hope I see you the next time. Bye everyone.